I just remember thinking like, why did two dads leave me? I feel like we did a lot of things to cope that we shouldn't have. I started like partying and drinking really heavy, just like doing everything I could to try and like fill the void. And I get a call from his mom. Hey, has Casey left your house? Yeah, he left a while ago. And she's like, okay, well, someone has called me and said that they think they've seen his truck in a really bad accident. On the way there, I'm getting messages from people. We think Casey's been in an accident and we know people are dead. Oh my gosh. He was like banging on the door, trying to break in. And my mom was like, no, like this is it. Like you're not coming back. You're not doing this to us anymore. And I just remember him saying like, if I get in, I'm gonna kill you. <gasps> Welcome back to the Salty Podcast. I am so excited to introduce my next guest. I have here with me a very special guest. She is beautiful, amazing, so sweet, loves Jesus. And I met her through social media. I have here Casey Driggers. Hello. Casey girl, because her boyfriend, no, no. <laughs> not boyfriend, her <laughs> husband is it's Casey boy. Yeah. Yeah. So we call y'all Casey squared. Yes. So cute. Well, I'm so excited you're here with me. I know. I'm glad to be here. Thanks. Thanks for coming. So we actually met. It's been two years now. Yeah. You were one of the first people I met on social media. Yeah. You were the first person I met. I think you were too for me. It was like re right after our blow up because I had moved into the rental house and that's when I met you. Or we started talking when you lived with your mother-in-law. Okay. And then we came and visited like the day you moved into yes. your rental house. Oh my gosh, so. because we discovered we really didn't live that far. Yeah. It was only, it's a three and a half hour drive. Yep. Okay, so let's talk about just a little bit of your backstory. For people that don't know you, I'm sure a lot of people do. I feel like we do have the same, a lot of the same following. Yeah. Um, just because we're so similar mm -hmm. and we hang out a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, so did you ever think that you would do social media? Um, not really. Like I've always wanted to do it, but I never thought that it would like actually happen for okay. us. So, um, we just started making random videos for fun and it just kind of took off. I remember the first video I saw you were in Walmart. Yeah. And I was like, this girl looks like me, sounds like yeah. me. We're the same. And everybody was, we had like hundreds of comments People saying that I look just like you and yes. that we acted just alike. So I remember that. Well, that's how I saw your video. I think I was getting tagged in it. Yeah. And I know. And then you had messaged me. You're like, I'm so sorry that people are. And I'm like, yeah. girl, no, I don't know what their problem is. Like, I'm yeah. happy about it. And then we met up shortly after that. Mm -hmm. And the rest is history. I know. It's so special. I know. And we're not like, I don't even think of y'all as like our social media friends no. anymore. We're like mm -mm. actual Real friends. life friends. Yeah. Yes. I love that. And that's just, I just, the community, it has brought me and, you know, cause high school and all of that and the friends you have really, you know, don't, a lot of them don't last. Yeah. I feel like real world starts after high school. Oh yeah. And so it's such a blessing. Just the people I have in my life and you're one of those people that speak life into me That's and all that. Sweet. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm just so excited because I've heard a lot of your testimony and part of your story, but I feel like, you know, not everybody watches all of our videos mm -hmm. to hear or they'll see silly videos of us. So they don't know the what's made us yeah. us, you know? And so I want to talk about what's made you you. So let's backtrack. Growing up, were you raised Christian? I was not raised Christian. My mom got pregnant with me when she was 14 and had me when she was 15. Like me, her, and her twin sister all shared a bedroom growing up. And we just come from like a, a family that was not religious at all. Yeah, I don't recall ever like even hearing the name Jesus growing up. Oh, really? Yeah, so I feel like when you're religious or you come from a religious family— you don't realize how many people that truly have no clue, like anything about the faith. And we were one of those families. Like I never grew up seeing anybody pray or um, go to church or anything like that. So. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And you, so you grew up your mom and her twin sister. I did not know your mom had a twin. Yeah. That's she does. their birthdays today. No way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> this will be posted way after. But. Yeah. <laughs> Um, raised by like a single mom, like at that point was your yeah. dad, biological dad, like in the picture. So he was not, um, pretty much from 
the beginning, like since she got pregnant, he decided not to be a part of our lives. When I was a young kid, she met my stepdad. So they got married and that's the dad of my other two sisters. Okay. Um, but pretty much from the jump, he was like pretty abusive and not really towards us, but to my mom, always been like a drug addict and in and out of prison, jail. So, oh my goodness. Yeah. Wow. So that was your biological dad or stepdad? That was my stepdad. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, cause I know whenever we talk and you say like my dad, did you know your stepdad from a young age? So he kind of became your dad? Yeah. Okay. Like that's who I called dad. Dad. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So biological dad, completely out of the picture. Yeah. Stepdad was your dad. Mm-hmm. And he had stepped up to be your dad, but then yeah, kind of took a turn. Mm-hmm. And the thing about my biological dad is he, so he's been on drugs since he was like maybe 14. So he, his brain was like pretty much fried from drugs. So now he has um, like drug induced schizophrenia. So he's just not like mentally all the way there. Um, like I know he knows that he has a kid and he knows that I have kids and stuff, but it's not like, it's just not all the way there for him to mm-hmm. have a relationship. Yeah. You know, like he doesn't know how he can't work or drive or anything. Yeah. So how, how does that affect you? Did that affect you from a young age into now or? Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, it was hard. Like, obviously, when someone chooses drugs, it's hard on the kid. Um, But from the beginning, my mom has always been, like, super honest about everything. Like, I knew who he was. I was around him. Um, So I just, that's just kind of all I've ever known. You grew up not religious, didn't know the faith. When did y'all... When did you get introduced to that? I think when I was like starting middle school, we had a family member who was like really deep into drugs, um, like hardcore drug addict and had been for a long time. And he started going to a church and he got saved and like God just completely transformed him like a whole different man. Like we didn't even recognize him at this point. And I guess like for my family, it was like if, Whatever he's doing, like if that can change him the way it did, and now he's a pastor. Oh wow! So yeah, and we're like, if if God can do that, then we need to like see what this is about. Mm. So we started going to church um, with them. Oh wow! Yeah. See, and that just shows like testimonies. Yeah, and that I mean that's why I started this podcast is so we can share testimonies, and that's our te- the word of our testimonies is how like it can help other people. Yeah. So you started going to church and Mm -hmm. was it weird to you at first? Because I mean, it was foreign to you. Yeah. So you stepped into this new lifestyle. How was that? Not only was it like foreign to us, it was, and like I've told you this before, we went to a church that was like very legalistic. Okay. Um, We were independent Baptists and they were really big on like, you have to wear skirts and nothing too tight like women need to have long hair and just like tons and tons of rules um so I feel like it was more about that than the love of God Mm -hmm. so that's kind of how I grew up and just like in a super judgmental environment but whenever I met Case is when I started going to church with him Mm -hmm. and that just like completely changed my life yeah because you met what 14 yeah so very young yeah okay did you think like the church you went to or like the legalistic views or whatever was all there was to the Christian, like to Christianity? Yeah. And so, so it wasn't until I met other people like him and his family and just like seeing how happy they were and they didn't care about like all the crazy rules and stuff. And I'm like, that's what I want. Like I want to go to a church and be surrounded by people that, you know, feel that way, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, So, yeah, we've been at that church ever since, and it's great. We love it. Mm Oh, sweet. Let's talk about you and Casey. Okay. Okay, because (laughs) y'all met 14. Yeah. We have very similar stories. Yeah. Me and high school sweethearts getting married. So what was the timeline of y'all meeting and, you know, till where you are now? So we met when we were 14, and, like, when you meet someone at such a young age, I feel like he's just been there for everything. So he was there when my dad left, like my stepdad. Um, I was 
almost 16 or I had just turned 16 when he like officially left me and my mom and my sisters and he ended up going to prison for a few years. And it's just crazy to think like Casey was there through all that and was like my rock, Mm -hmm. you know, like even at such a young age, he was just so solid from the start. Yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. (laughs) How was that? Like, I mean, 16 years old and your dad leaves, like did I'm sure a lot of feelings came along with that. Yeah. Like so, were you feeling rejected or insecure? I just remember thinking like, why did two dads leave me? You know, because of that, I feel like me and my mom and like my mom and my sisters, like they have their own story. But for me personally, like we, I feel like we did a lot of things to cope that we shouldn't have. And so when I was probably like 18, 19, I got into some bad stuff. I started like partying and drinking really heavy and um, just like doing everything I could to try and like fill the void. And I would blame it on like daddy issues. But like looking back, I'm like, it wasn't, it wasn't that at all. It was just me, you know, just trying to fill that void. But thank God, like Case stayed with me through that. And it was a hard time, like on our relationship. I just remember him saying like, I can't trust you to like even hang out with your friends anymore, or go anywhere or do anything without you getting drunk. And he just like stayed with me and prayed with me so hard through that time. And eventually I came out of it. Like I, I remember at one point I got alcohol poisoning and I was like so sick. And I'm like, I'm literally going to die because like, I just can't give up what I'm doing. And I just like got on my knees and was like weeping to God and just like begging him to just pull me out of what I was. And yeah, he just took me out of it. And ever since then, it's been, I'm just like a changed person. Yeah. Oh, I see. I know. I know that's, I mean, that's deep. Like that's hard. I feel like a lot of people have daddy issues, Mm -hmm. you know, and especially being a young girl and you had two dads that left you. Mm -hmm. How did that, and you had two younger sisters too. Did you feel almost that you had to hide your, how you felt to protect them, like step up for them? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I feel like I, me and my mom were like big supports for each other. And we just kind of like took the bear of it all on ourselves and not like, we didn't want our little sister or my little sisters to see, um, what all was happening. So, um, thankfully like my youngest sister, she was only three when it all happened. Um, so she doesn't really, she has like no memory of him really. So that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. But, um, for my middle sister, I think it hit her really hard as well. So, yeah. but yeah, we're above it now and we're all Praise like Jesus. recovered. Thank God, you know, mm-hmm. that he could bring y'all through that. And yeah. Are you close to your mom? Yeah. I feel like I've always been like a mama's girl. Um, She's always been the person that I was closest to. And so like, I just, I remember being little and I would see my dad do things. And like, this is so awful to even like, remember but there were times where I like saw him have drugs like he would go to my sister's room and like he would have a friend over and they would like do drugs together and I would like go and tell my mom Mm -hmm. like tattling on him every single time I saw him do something so like me and her were really close growing up it's like she I mean you only really had each other yeah because it's like even when he was there it sounds like he was absent yeah and for sure I feel like that is such a big thing in today's culture too are um like absent I think I'm saying that word right. Absent. Yeah. <laughs> Parents or, yeah. you know, absent dad. It's like, yeah, they're there, but they're not there. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that's even harder, you know? Yeah. Um, but I'm so glad y'all came out of that. Talking about, you know, the period where Case was there for you. Mm-hmm. See, kind of watching 14, he sees you have your daddy issues, mm-hmm. a man leaving you twice And at this point, I know you've told me like y'all always like wanted to get married and stuff. So how was going through that stage like for you in case like him watching that? Like, was there a pivotal moment when you felt like God pulled you out of that for you to get to where you are now? Yeah. So when we were 19, Case was at my house one night. I was in cosmetology school at the time and he would 
we would like alternate. I would go to his house after I got home from school. And then some nights he would come to my house and Mondays were our nights for him to come to my house. So he left at like maybe 10 PM and I get a call from his mom. And at this point it's like 11 and she's like, Hey, is Casey left your house? And I was like, yeah, he left a while ago. And she's like, okay, well, someone has called me and said that they think they've seen his truck in a really bad accident. And I just like immediately like drop the phone, run, wake up my grandparents. And I'm like, we have to go and like, see if, see what's happening. Like, see if he made it home, like just search the roads, do what we can. So at this point I'm like a basket case. Cause I do not handle oh my gosh, I'm stress sure. well. Did you so, f- have a feeling that yeah. something happened? Yeah. Um, and we live in a super small town. So at this point on the way there, I'm getting messages from people saying like, Hey, we think Casey's been in an accident and we know people are dead. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So I was just like, I couldn't even stand up. My grandpa literally put me in the back of his car and we started driving down the road. Um, and that's when we came up on it. And he, at that point, the ambulance had already taken him to the hospital. Um, but he had been in a fatal accident with people. (laughs) Sorry. No, I'm going to cry too. (laughs) Um, with people that we actually knew, it was a mom and her young daughter, um, and they both didn't make it. And he, it's by the grace of God that he did. Like we, he has no memory of the accident, but at some point he tried to get out of his truck, I guess, to check on them. And he was actually like stopped on top of a bridge and just like fell over the side of the bridge. Um, probably 15, 20 feet down. Wow. So he was down there. He couldn't like scream for help or anything because his lungs collapsed. So he was just like laying there and he said the whole time he was just like singing praises to God and just like praying the whole time. And, um, so he was found taken to the hospital and the lady that was like in the accident that passed, she actually worked at that hospital. So it was like the people that were treating him, had to find out, um, that she passed. And it was just, it was a tough time for everyone. Um, it was my, one of my best friends aunt and cousin that passed. So it was really hard for both of us. And he struggled with that for a long time, like maybe up until a couple years ago was like really depressed over it. And like he, cause he carried a lot of guilt with that. yeah. 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 There's, I think they call it like survivor's guilt. Like you, you just feel bad that you lived Mm -hmm. and that other people didn't. And so he was dealing with a lot of that. And, um, he had depression over it up until maybe two to three years ago. Mm -hmm. So, and that's been a while since then, but that kind of thing, like it just lives with you forever. For sure. How was that from your perspective, like watching him carry that guilt and like with what you were going through at the time, it was all, all that kind of meshed together. Like when you got the alcohol poisoning And then that happening, is that when you felt God pull you out? Like what, where was the timeline with all that? Yeah. So I was getting into all that, um, around the same time that that happened. And I just remember thinking like, we, I've got to get it together. So yeah, I just remember like with all that happening, I just thought like he, he's been there with me through everything, like through my dad leaving and me drinking and partying. And so this is like my time to be there for him. And so I like got my act together and the rest is history. We wow. got engaged not long after that. Okay. After the accident. Yeah. Okay. Um, so his accident was in November and we got married in March or we got, we got engaged in March. Okay. Cause so. that probably put, I mean, when something tragic like that happens, it almost puts life more in perspective for sure. And been like, okay, what, what are, what really is the point of life, Mm -hmm. you know? And so what, then when did y'all get married after engaged? We got married in August. Of that same year? Yeah. Okay. So we eloped actually. So it was like a pretty fast engagement, but, um, yes, we eloped in August and then I got pregnant two months later Okay. in October. With Sawyer. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And now Sawyer's five. Five and a half. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. And now y'all have Indy, who's four, 
And now honey. I know. Who's two months old. <laughs> she's so cute. Y'all, I got to hold her and she's so precious. <laughs> it's so crazy. Like looking back at my life and just thinking like everything that I've been through is what led me to this. Yeah. You know, yeah. like this is my life now. Mm-hmm. I remember when me and Casey were going to get married, I was like, I, when we have kids, like they're not going to go through what I did as a kid. And so I want us to be like good examples and I want them to just always know Jesus. Like, because what a testimony is that to just say like my parents, you know, had me in church and we grew up in the faith and I've just never known different. And that's what I want my kids to be able to say. Yeah, no, for sure. That's so precious. Going off of that, like what are things that, y'all want to implement in their daily lives or whatever, or like things you've learned you can take from your past that you don't want them to like traits maybe of parents and that you're like, well, let's, I want to do this differently. Yeah. So, um, like in my household, obviously there was like tension between my mom and my stepdad. Um, there was just like lots of screaming and fighting. And like one thing that we do not do is yell. I'm like, I never like want to scream at my kids. Like I don't want them to grow up thinking that's normal for Mm -hmm. people just to be yelling at them. Um, So like if they get in trouble or if something happens, like we just have a normal conversation and we talk to them like people. Um, And like when me and Casey mess up, we make sure that we apologize to them, like to their face and then ask for forgiveness and a big thing, like something we've done recently is like, I I said, sorry to Sawyer for something. And he's like, it's okay. And I'm like, but it's not okay. Like sin is not okay, you know? And so I really want my kids to know, I don't know why I'm getting emotional over this. Um, but yeah, so instead of saying like, it's okay, we say, I forgive you. Mm -hmm. Um, in the same way, like to kind of go off of how God forgave us, you Mm. know? Oh, I'm going to take that and use that. (laughs) No, that's so good. I mean, because that's, I think, something like Hunter and I try to implement too. Like, we're always going to say sorry to Mm -hmm. Ivy and this future baby, you know, and because that's something growing up I didn't hear, you know? Yeah. It's just like, I'm the parent, you're the kid, that's just how it goes. Oh, yeah. But it really, the picture of, like, God and us is so full of grace, you know? Mm-hmm. So I love that. I need to do that. Because <laughs> Ivy will say, I'm say, I'll am say, i say, I'm sorry. And she'll say, it's okay, mommy. And I'm like, oh, but I like that I forgive yeah. you because that really puts that into perspective. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that's so special that our kids will be raised knowing that we mess up too because it almost makes them know from the get-go we're not perfect because like even like me growing up, me and Hunter dived into kind of talking about how you go from thinking your parents are these perfect heroes. And then as you get older, you realize that they're, they make mistakes too, Yeah. but it kind of sets you back because you never were used to that. So I think starting out young being like, no, we're not perfect mm-hmm. and we mess up and, but we say, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I love that. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I just got to say too, like you and Casey boy, like y'all, these are, y'all are amazing parents Stop. no seriously <laughs> thank you and I know you. <laughs> you hear all the time from us like we talk about I'm y'all like, are I sweet. respect you as a mom so much and how y'all parent and like I observe you like whenever you're talking to the kids like you're just so they have respect for y'all but because it's because you respect them and Casey boy as a father like does that heal some things in you seeing how he's a dad to your kids oh yeah like 100 percent. I think like my family, like my mom is even like in all how he is as a dad and like recently going through postpartum and just the way that he takes care of me and he's just so solid. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like genuinely could not ask for anything better. Like in my eyes, there's no guy in the world that's better than him. <laughs> oh, I know. He's so gentle he with is. you and the kids and, but still has that spiritual authority. Yeah. It's so beautiful. And like, was he raised Christian? Yes. And like, so he's, I mean, you can sense Jesus in him, like the love of God he has. I mean, you don't even have to know he's Christian to ask him. Like, I feel like you can just, you just okay. know. Yeah. You could just tell just in his actions. Mm-hmm. For so, sure. 
Yo, he, he he's so such an angel. No, he really. Is. Don't all of our friends here be like, oh my gosh, Casey Boy's so sweet. I know. Yes, everybody raves about how good he is mm-hmm. because he really is like the sweetest. And he has the the biggest servant's heart. Like he just wants to be in the background. Like he doesn't want attention. He never does anything to be like recognized or um he just genu- genuinely like has a heart for serving and a heart for God. And so I just, I tell him all the time, I'm like, I hope our kids grow up to be just like you. That is so sweet. (laughs) And y'all having a son, I think what better representation than his own dad. Yeah, for sure. And the, like where we're at now in the world, I feel like the world needs guys like that. Mm, mm -hmm. Tons of Casey boys. Yes. You know, so we're going to try and raise some. (laughs) Yes. Be world changers. Yeah. I just think that's so special and just hearing you talk about what you went through with not only one but two dads leaving you how beautiful the will that God had on your life Mm -hmm. like that he gave you exactly what you were missing and more oh yeah did you go through a period of unforgiveness with your dad yeah so with my biological dad I never really had like any ill feelings towards him I guess because it like happened when I was an infant and I just never really um I didn't know any different so it wasn't like he was there and then he left like thank God his parents really stepped up like I'm extremely close with his mom and she's like really the only like present grandparents we have and she actually took in my mom and my sisters so they like live right next to each other and they're that's like my mom's mom basically Mm -hmm. so they're super close um But with my stepdad, it took a while, especially because I was, like, old enough to see what he was doing. Um, I remember, like, my mom waking us up in the middle of the night to, like, drive around town and try and find him because he just wouldn't come home. um, And he would be, like, drunk or high with, like, other women. And so that really took a toll on me as a kid. And it wasn't just, like, having to forgive him for leaving. It was, like, forgiving him for what he did our entire life. But now I'm definitely in a place where I'm like totally, I totally forgive him um, and like wish nothing. Like I want nothing more than for him to turn around his life and to find God. Mm -hmm. You know, that's like my biggest prayer for him. Yeah. I love that. That shows growth on in you and, you know, forgiveness is hard. It is. And I had to do like a lot of self-forgiveness as well because I I just felt like him going to prison for four years the first time was my fault because I am the one that like called the cops on him and like sent him there, I guess. Um, so one night, it was after he left when I was 16. So he had like left, they were getting a divorce. Um, he was living with another woman at this time. One night he came back to our house and he was super drunk, like almost to the point of like blackout on the front yard. Like he was so drunk. He was like banging on the door, trying to break in. And my mom was like, no, like this is it. Like you're not coming back. You're not doing this to us anymore. Um, And I just remember him saying like, if I get in, I'm going to kill you. (gasps) And I, at this point I was holding my sisters and my littlest sister was three. Like she's a toddler. Like I have a baby that is fixing to turn four. So like thinking of her at that age. And anyway, I was just like holding them in our bunk beds. And I just yelled across the house. I was like, mom, I'm fixing to call the cops on him. And she just said, okay. And I called the cops and they came and got him. And they ended up keeping him for four years, I guess from like drugs. And he was violating his probation by coming back to our house So there was like a few different charges that Mm -hmm. got him there for so long. Oh my gosh. So why did you feel so guilty? Because in that moment, I mean, you were the hero for your mom, like calling the cops. Like what made you have to end up forgiving yourself for that? I'm just like the type of person, I feel like I feel bad for everybody, like no matter what they do. And I I just felt so guilty for him being there. I'm like, he's going to be in prison, like, away from the real world for all these years. And it's my fault. And like my middle sister was a huge daddy's girl. And so 
like taking him away from her, it just, it ate me alive. Mm -hmm. And now like we're in a place, she's older, we're in our twenties and like, she knows now that it was for the best that he was gone. But in the moment it was really hard for her, especially. I'm sure. And so what was the, how long did it take for you to kind of forgive yourself? Like, did you have to talk to a lot of people or was that just kind of a revelation that you had with God? Yeah, I think it was just a revelation. Like, just one of those things, again, where I've, like, had to beg God just, like, on my knees and say, like, please let me find it in myself to have forgiveness for this man. Mm -hmm. Because just, like, seeing what he did to my mom mentally and physically, it it took, it was a lot for me to forgive him. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah, it's just one of those things where God intervened. And now I have, like, no ill feelings towards him at all. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Like I could see him in public right now and be like, Hey, how are you? Yeah. And just be cordial. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, okay. So this is going into like a kind of a different topic. Um, you just had a baby Mm -hmm. and we postpartum. How, how are you? So I feel like physically I'm doing good. Mm -hmm. I am still like a little sore and stuff, but Overall, I'm doing good physically. Um, I have been struggling mentally a little bit with like postpartum anxiety. And I had this with my firstborn. So I feel like I I kind of like was prepared for it because I know like it could just happen. Um, so, but yeah, I've been dealing with that again this go around and it's been hard, but... Has it been a, like almost d- harder this time than with your first go around having it? Um, yeah, I feel... I feel like I'm struggling a little bit more this time. I think with my firstborn, I had to get it together really quick because I got pregnant so soon after when he was nine months old. Um, And so there was just like no time, I guess. But this time I've just like, there's such a big age gap. My biggest kids are like older. And so I'm just like, I guess I'm just kind of like dwelling in it. Like yesterday was the first time I drove by myself with her. And it was like 15 minutes to meet you guys. Mm -hmm. And I was so anxious the entire time. I was like crying on the way to meet you guys. And I was just like praying like out loud to God to just like help me with my anxiety. And like, I know these things. And that just, that, that goes to show you that even when you are a believer, like, it's not going to be perfect. Like you're going to struggle if anything worse, because like the enemy is yes, coming for us. Absolutely. And I was just like rebuking that the whole way. Good. Yeah. Yes, sister. Rebuke that in the name of Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that it makes me so like sad and like I worry for you, you know, cause I went through the same kind of thing and it's, it's kind of a lonely place, you know, and even if you have good community and a good spouse, cause I know how well Casey boy has helped you through it. Mm-hmm. It's still, it can be so isolating. Yeah. You know, I love that, you know, who to lean into. Mm-hmm. Are there ways that, okay. Like with your first go around with Sawyer and you had it like what you almost had a, like there was no room for it in a way because you got pregnant again and all yeah. that. Are there steps you're taking that help it at all? Yeah. So um, obviously like praying and being in the word are like the obvious ones. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I'm a part of like a discipleship group with my church. Um, And there's like a community there where I could just like text. And I've told them before, like we were a couple weeks ago, we were going to meet up to go eat. And I was honest. I was like, if, like, I don't know if I can crawl out of my hole to come and meet y'all. Mm-hmm. And my friend, she met with me um, at church a couple days after that. And she was like, if you're in the hole, then we're coming in the hole with you. And so it's just, like, yeah, yeah. it's just like surrounding yourself with people like that. Mm. Yeah, no, that's so good. And because it's something about, like, I remember whenever I was struggling after just talking about it, helps it's almost like it just chisels down a little bit each time like I know it's still hard but almost talking about it makes you feel free a Mm -hmm. little bit knowing okay I'm not crazy yeah I'm not alone in the moment you feel so crazy like with intrusive thoughts and stuff you're Mm -hmm. like I'm actually crazy white I said white (laughs) (laughs) right (laughs) well and people expect 
I think that is why really just in the past few years, people have opened up more about postpartum things. Oh yeah. And especially as Christians, it's almost unheard of years ago, having mental health and faith all combined basically. Yeah. And so now I love that it is talked about so much more Mm -hmm. because it creates that space. I feel like in the past people just had to shove it down because they're like, Oh, I shouldn't be feeling this way because God tells me do not be anxious about anything, you know, but he says he doesn't say you're not going to be anxious Mm -hmm. if you're a Christian. He says, do not be anxious. So it's almost like the world with the world, all that stuff is going to come, you know, worry, anxiety, fear, all those things. But he gives us the tools to help get past it. But sometimes it's just a process, you know, Yeah. and it's, we just have to lean on him, you know, until he gets better. Yeah. But have you, and I was on, I actually also got on medication for mine and that helped a lot too. And so I'm an advocate for yes, Jesus, prayer, all those things. Um, that was something I had to pray about for myself. Mm -hmm. Like if, you know, to talk to somebody or seek medical help if you need it, but yeah. And all of this too, I feel like is like a result of living in a falling world, a fallen world. Like we're just surrounded by sin and that's why we deal with these things. But it just makes it so much sweeter thinking about like the day when we're in heaven and we have new bodies and yes. like, we're not going to feel anxiety anymore. I know. You know, it's going to be perfect. I know yeah. that is, it's so, such like a, I almost have to get, try to have a child like imagination thinking about it because we're just used to what we feel now and in the present. And you're like, how are we not going to feel all those things? Yeah. But that is going to be such a joyful, sweet thing. And like so freeing. You'll have to come find me in heaven. <laughs> there. If it works like that. I know. We don't know what's gonna happen. But if, if we're allowed, oh my then gosh. I'm gonna go Best find you still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can share a mansion. Yeah. <laughs> you get that room, I get this room. Oh, that is so funny. Well, I am just so thankful that you were so vulnerable and let me just kind of dig into your life. And I mean, that beauty comes from ashes, you know? And so I feel like you're a walking testament of how God can take whoever, whatever situation and turn it into good. And I'm excited for your, like your kids to have you and Casey, like going from what you went through to what their life is going to be like is so sweet. I know. It just makes me so happy. You know, this is like the first time that I've actually like told my whole story, like sat down and told it. Yeah. Um, so like before this, it was just my husband and like my mom, people that like lived it with me that knew. So it feels like, it feels like freeing to be so vulnerable and just to just like tell my story. Um, and I hope people can see like social media can be a highlight reel and like looking at my profiles and stuff, like you might not realize, like mm. I've been through the trenches yes, in my yeah. life. Um, but that just goes to show you like people like me, like you, like any, anybody in the world is going through things that you don't have a clue about. Right. So yeah, I feel honored that this was like, that you let me be on. Of course. And tell yes. it here. I know. I'm just so thankful. Um, that you came on here. So before we close out, is there anything that you, you know, that's on your heart right now that you might want to tell somebody that's listening? Yeah. So I would just say like, no matter what you've been through in your life, like all the hardships, there's a reason for it. And, um, like with God, you can come out above and really lean on him and find peace in him that you're not going to be able to find anywhere else. Yeah. Love that. Oh, well, thank you so much. If y'all want to follow her on the platforms, it's your Instagram's Casey Driggers, but TikTok and all that. Is it Casey and Casey? Yeah. Okay. Casey for like boy Casey first Mm -hmm. with a C and then me with a K. (laughs) (laughs) They're so cute. Casey squared. Y'all should have made that your username. I know. Go change it. Is it it too late to change it? Yeah, you should change it. (laughs) Okay, well, thank you all for listening. Um, Leave us a review, comments, all that would be lovely. We'd love to see that. And thank you for being here. Thank you, Casey. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.